<laughs> Hi! So, we are back with another... Mm, let's make a webtoon using Clip Studio Paint for Beginners video series. That's very, very long. Very long and worded. We got Cintiqua, my display tablet back here. And then we got my computer right there. We're going to use that stuff. And our last video, we did how to color a webtoon in Clip Studio Paint. I shared my process and I gave you guys your action step. So hopefully you guys did your action step. If you didn't, no worries. That's fine. You go at your own pace. Do what you like to do. We're just having fun here. It's zappity. I watch too much office. <laughs> Any hoodles for this video, I'm going to share with you my webtoon background process. I do a lot of different things, so I like to say there's not one size fits all, nor for me there's not like one size that is all among all and is the only way to do the thing. That's not that's not like my my reality on life. When it comes to art, there's more than one way to like create something. In my opinion, <laughs> in my little universe, you know, so I'm going to show you one of my background processes because I have many, but I'm going to show you one background process and I'm going to keep it as beginner friendly as possible. Mean, I'm going to show like two different steps and you're going to have an action task after that. So let's go ahead and let me show you how I make my webtoon backgrounds. Okay, let's go. As I mentioned before, this is my display tablet, my Wacom Cintweet display tablet. There's my my Wacom one over there. And then this is my computer. In order for my display tablet to work, it has to be connected to my computer. You don't need this to draw a webtoon. I saved up money and I've had her for over 10 plus years, so she is my buddy. And I just like to share what it is because some people ask like what what tools do you use this is what i'm using but i will also use paper pen i will use rocks listen to me listen to me listen let me switch let me switch this around i need you listen to me look look listen i will use rocks and dirt anything i can get my little hands on to draw i drawing and just having fun with art that's just my jam i that's just it doesn't matter it's not the paintbrush that makes the painter it's the painter themselves is what I've heard and that is what I also use to to like justify my buying of art supplies I don't have an art hoarding addiction I, I could stop buying supplies anytime I want anyways let's skip let me let me so this is my webtoon background this is all 3d models and image materials you might be like what and what 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 don't you worry I'm gonna show you what I did First, to find the 3D model in Clip Studio Paint, we're gonna go to here, Windows, and we're gonna scroll all the way down till we get to Material. We're just gonna click on anything. If your stuff is changed here, don't worry, just click on something. I wanna click on 3D. Whoa, this thing on my bob popped up. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click down here, scroll down. <gasps> backgrounds boop there it goes now I'm going to actually click this little arrow why because I want a specific background because this background is a housing background so they have lots of different things right here in Clip Studio Paint and then from there we can just pick a background that we want and it's like well how do you add up the Clip Studio Paint tap and drag there it is there's our 3d background that's your action step. I want you to go to Windows, go to Material, click whatever here, and then go to 3D. See, you just click that button. It might be like that. Click 3D. Go down to Background. Click that button again. And I want you to go to Housing. And then I want you just to pick one and then hold it and then drag it and drop it there. That's your first action step that I want you to do, okay? Now, your next action step after you do that, you might be wondering, hey, how do I, how do I position this thing? You can use this. See, I can use this tool to move it around, woo, and get whatever angle I want. I can use this. If I want this house, if I want this house to be right here, I can hold this 
and I could move it like that. Hold and drag. Now it's in the frame. Or you might be like, oh, this is too overwhelming to figure out a position. No worries. Here's our second action step. After we did our first one, dragging it onto our template, our canvas. What am I saying? <laughs> Our next action step while our 3D model is selected. If you're wondering what tool I'm using to move the, to like mess with the 3D model, I'm using this operations tool. Now, your next action step, you wanna click this one right here. Specify camera angle from preset. I like to use this because it has default camera angles that I can use. Meaning I don't have to think about any camera angles. I could just, set a camera angle that's already created and then just build a background from there like this look look that looks pretty good this could be a whole background let me show you what it looked like see that it there we go there's our background but that's going to be your action step i want you to drag a background from the 3d model material area and then i want you to let me click on the 3d layer again I want you to go and I'm going to click on this right here and then I want you to click a preset angle and that's all I want you to do. Now you might be wondering, hey, but it still, it, it looks 3D-ish. We'll cover that in the next video. This is the background part one one. Part one video, we'll have, we'll split it in two videos. In the next video, I will give you your final action step and we're going to make it look like how that video my background looked on there i don't want to overwhelm you because the whole background process it can be super overwhelming and especially if you have like an inner critic that's like this isn't good enough this no one's gonna like it someone's gonna make fun of it what if someone says this looks 3d you know you have all of those like voices or at least i have all of those like voices in my head so that's why for this i'm just gonna help we're just gonna do one step at a time so that we can overcome that feeling of overwhelm on top of the inner critic that's screaming at us, you know? So, those are your action steps. Take your 3D model material, drag it onto the canvas, and then pick a camera angle in the preset that I showed you, okay? If you have, like, if you're confused on any parts, don't worry. Feel free to leave a comment and we can cover that in the next video, you know? Now, if you might be saying, hey, I don't like 3D models, don't worry, don't you worry. I will show you how to make I will show you how I how I like to make my webtoon comic backgrounds using photos and I'll show you how to and or just using like rulers you know if you're a traditional artist and you feel more comfortable building your backgrounds from scratch using rulers so now I'll show you all of that in the other series the more advanced series you know so, but with like the Ibis paint one and Metabog paint one I'll show you how to make webtoon backgrounds using photos but like for the rulers and the more advanced stuff that's going to be for like the more advanced video series so after i do the ibis paint and the metabong paint beginner series then we'll see if it if there is a if there if you guys would be interested in like the more advanced version of that so yeah <laughs> Was that where how are you guys feeling? You guys you guys feeling okay? How how is your inner child feeling? I've noticed that a lot of comments, you know, about people uh on my Instagram, they've been feeling they want to start a webtoon, but either they're scared or they want to start a webtoon, but they don't want to like look at any guides because they don't want their art style to like mimic what the guide's art style is. And so that's why I want to you know, I want to end up making a workshop that kind of just doesn't show like an art style, but it just shows here's different, a step-by-step -step guide and you can input your own image style. So that way you can just be like, okay, I have just the blank steps to follow. And then now by the end, I will know the whole process of the webtoon and I will have like a little mini little webtoon already done. And then I could just repeat and rinse and repeat. So yeah, but I don't even know what I was, where I was going with that. But if some of you are like, hey, I'm scared of starting a webtoon, I am always terrified. So we can be scared together. And then also for those of you who are like, hey, I want to make a webtoon, but I don't want to post it online. You know how to post it online. I tell my friend that she feels bad because, you know, she does her music and she feels like, hey, I should post this online. I should be posting this online, but I don't want to. And I tell her, girl, you don't have to. That's your creative stuff that you made. You know, no one is entitled to it, but you you know, if it makes you happy, then it has done your its part, and it is not a waste of time. 
You have not wasted your time because you just created a happy feeling for yourself. It is not a waste of time if you don't share it with others. You shared it with yourself, with your inner child, and she is happy now. So your work has not been in vain. So for those of you who feel like, oh, I feel bad because I should probably be posting this up my webtoon online, but I don't want to. And I feel like all my work is in vain if I don't post it online. Your work's not in vain. If it makes you happy and you've done something and you've created something, you know, it's not in vain. You just did something. You created something. And that is wonderful. And your happiness is justification enough and value enough and if that's all you want to do then that is more than enough yes i am rambling anyways i'll see you back in another in the next video make sure to do your action steps or don't there's no pressure no pressure at all okay i love you guys bye ow my nose bye <laughs>